Okay, so this talk was actually not part of the original differential equation series, but I added it realizing that, that a lot of the things in differential equations seem unmotivated if you don't see the basic uh, parallel or the basic uh, use of integration. So that's why I decided to add this video. So I'm going to look at a very baby type of differential equation, and that's this. So x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, and the differential equation is dy dx is fx. Now, sometimes you may see it written as y prime instead of dy dx here. Okay, so the equation says y prime is fx, and this little f is a known function. Okay, I'm not using little f for the solution function. I'm using little f for some other function, which is known. And now I have to find the solutions for y as a function of x. Okay. Now, before we go on, let's just quickly note what the order and degree of this differential equation are. What's the order? The order is 1. And that's because you go only up to the first derivative. You don't see any higher order derivatives appearing. The degree, the degree is also 1. And that's because in terms of the first derivative, it's linear. You have the first derivative equals something. So it's degree one. If you're, if you're uncomfortable with these terms, you can go back and review the introductory video to differential equations. Okay, the one where I define the terms. Okay, so that's good. Now I want you to think about how you would solve this differential equation without knowing anything about differential equations. I really want you to think about just knowing all the things you do know. How do you solve this? There's in fact, there's a whole area of mathematics that you have probably just seen if you're doing this in a course. There's a topic which you do before differential equation in a lot of detail, which is essentially about how to solve this type of differential equation. What's that? That's indefinite integration. So if you think about indefinite integration, what's that doing? It's basically just trying to find all the functions whose derivative is a given function, right? So I'll write this in black just to make this clear, the solution to this is just y is integral fx dx. Okay. Now, because you may be more familiar with this in the concrete, I'm going to do, write out an actual uh, example of this. Okay. There's nothing really to illustrate with the example, just if you're not, if you're not comfortable just talking in abstractions. Okay, do this. So let's say I give you d by dx is, let's keep it simple, so 1 plus sin x. Okay, which means y is a function whose derivative with respect to x is 1 plus sin x. How do you find y? Well, y is just the integral of 1 plus sin x. That's the definition of integration, right? It's finding all the functions whose derivative is a given thing. That's the definition of indefinite integration. What's this? Well, you have to integrate this. We know how to do that. You get x minus cosine x. And then you put a plus c. And we don't usually write this, but c is any real number. Now, what does this mean? This means that for every fixed value of c, you get an antiderivative of this function. So if c is 5, you get x minus cosine x plus 5. Okay. You could take c as 20 and you get x minus cosine x plus 20. You could take c as 0 and you could get x minus cosine x. So you could take any value of c, all of these. They are just in three of them, but there's infinitely many of them. There's a whole real lines worth of them. All of these satisfy the differential equation. Okay. And these are precisely the solutions to the differential equation. Okay. They're all, you just find a particular antiderivative and then you put a plus C. Okay. Now let's try to understand that in our language of differential equations, in our language of differential equations, this particular antiderivative is a particular solution. So x minus cosine x, this is a particular solution. 
and x minus cosine x plus c as c varies over the real that's a solution family and that solution family in this case gives you all the solutions so that is the general solution okay so good so we have got the general solution left the polar solution plus a constant because it's this kind of differential equation now i said this is the order one degree one differential equation what i didn't say clearly and i should is that this is a very 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 special type of first order first degree differential equation so, so it's not necessary that any first order first degree differential equation should be like this in general there's there's going to be stuff involving y as well here this this equation is special because there's no y appearing i mean there's a dy dx but y as such x uh, separately doesn't appear which is why it's very easy to convert to an integration problem okay so in this case we managed to reduce it to an integration problem pretty directly we also notice that the constant of integration is a parameter for the general solution family what i mean is that that this constant we got here this constant is a parameter for different values of this constant you get different particular solutions so this is a parameter which you vary and you get the general solution family now these two ideas continue to hold for other uh, differential equations first or first order order one even though the equations themselves cannot be solved in this simple fashion so what do i mean well typically any first order differential equation the way you ultimately are going to solve it is you're going to reduce it to an integration problem and actually you can maybe maybe have a few other integrals you have to do in the process but there's going to be one final integration problem where you get rid of the derivative and that is also the step where you introduce a constant of integration and that constant of integration is going to be the parameter for your general solution family which means that for first order so this is all first order right order is one first order you expect you need to do one integration to get rid of the derivative so you expect one free parameter in the general solution now there are some subtleties here there are what some might call exceptions the so if you formulate the statement correctly there aren't any exceptions but there are some subtleties here which i don't want to go into but as a general rule first order means when you get the general solution it's going to be just be one freely varying constant there was just one c here there weren't like two different constants which you could vary freely okay so so the upshot is that you have to ultimately reduce it to an integration problem and the reason why you get these constants in in your general solution is because of constants of integration that's why you get these parameters okay now in some sense it's nice that that we spent so much effort just learning how to solve this kind of differential equation now if for every other kind of differential equation you have to learn an entire new theory right for just this type of differential equation we learn the entire theory of indefinite integration if for another new type of differential equation you have to learn an entire new theory that would be a big waste of time right a lot of work but it turns out that in most cases the differential equation we learn how to solve we do them by converting them to integration problems somewhat indirectly okay so converting a differential equation to integration problems is going to be our general strategy for solving differential equations okay now i want to go on to or i should say one more thing here that is in our case the way the constant appeared was just y is a particular solution plus a constant okay that's what will happen in this type of differential equation however you could imagine more uh, tricky types of differential equations where you do ultimately do an integration but by the time you do the integration the x and y are all messed up with each other and so you don't get y is something plus a constant you get some kind of relation between x and y and a constant it's all messed up okay that could happen
And so this is a very simple picture. You should definitely uh, use this as an initial guide, but don't get too mesmerized by this. Not everything works like this. Okay, I want to talk now about higher order differential equations. Now, if you are doing this uh, to help you yourself with a course, it may be the case that in your course you are not doing higher order differential equations. I still suggest you try to understand this because you may encounter higher order differential equations in other subjects or at other places and this is just a very basic understanding. Okay, And uh, it will also help you understand the first order situation a bit better, I think. So, this is a baby example of an order k differential equation. The degree is still 1 because it's linear in the order k derivative. It's just saying the kth derivative of y where y is the, it's the same thing x independent y dependent. The kth derivative of y is a known function of x. How do you solve this? Well again uh, just because maybe you find it easier if it's concrete. I'll do a concrete example. So let's do uh, let's do y triple prime is cosine x. So you know the third derivative of y is cosine x. Now how do you how do you find y? Well you have to integrate three times. Get rid of three derivatives. And the first time you integrate, you'll get y double prime is the antiderivative of this, which is sine x plus, I'll call this uh, c1. Okay, I'm calling it c1 because we'll see another constant appearing soon. In fact, the next step. Now I want to again integrate this. So two more integrations. So y prime. Now, antiderivative of sine is minus cosine. Antiderivative of c1 is c1x, and now you put a plus a new constant for this new integration, call it c2. Now, what do I do now? Integrate again. So y is minus sine x plus c1 x square over 2, just integrating this thing, plus c2 x plus c3, I got a third new constant. And here c1, c2, c3 are arbitrary real constants. What does this mean? It means that for every real value of c1, every real value of c2, and every real value of c3, you will get a solution to this differential equation, which just means you'll get a third antiderivative of cosine. Okay, if I put c1 as 5, c2 is 6, and c3 is 20, I plug them in, I'll get some function, minus sine x plus 5x square over 2 plus 6x plus 20, and that will have the property that its third derivative is cosine x. Okay, now in general, if you have anything of this type, you'll be doing exactly the same thing, right? You'll be integrating f k times, and in the process, you'll accumulate on the sidelines a polynomial of degree up to k minus 1 with arbitrary coefficients. Okay, so the general, if you have y, k is fx, then y is some function, which is a kth antiderivative of f, plus arbitrary polynomial of degree less than or equal to k minus 1. And the coefficients of that are going to be the so that's k minus 1, k minus 1, okay? And the coefficients of that are going to be the uh, free parameters. How many parameters do you get? Well, you'll get all the coefficients up to the k minus 1 thing, so that's k of them. Each integration, you introduced a new constant, okay? Let's look at this. Now, so this reduces to integration problems. In fact, how many of them? k of them. One after the other. Okay. And we get 
you get k constants of integration and those are the k parameters for the general selection family. So notice something, if the differential equation has order k, you expect the general solution family to have k free parameters. Well, actually I just illustrated it with this very, very special format of differential equation, but I'm saying that the principle actually works in greater generality. When you have an order k differential equation, even if it's not this type, it's something much more complicated, the way you'll ultimately try to do is you'll, you'll try to reduce it to a sequence of k integration problems. Each, each integration problem you're sort of reducing the complexity, you're reducing the order by one, that's the idea. And you're introducing a new constant in the process. And when you do that k times, you get to, to something which is free of derivatives and uh, you have k free parameters in the general solution family. Okay, so the order equals the number of free parameters in the general solution. That's the rough idea. Now there are lots of subtleties here. This is not true for a lot of reasons in a lot of cases, but it's still the general principle. Now the problem, the reason why I haven't told you, or the reason why this doesn't solve the entire problem. Okay. The reason why it doesn't is that, well, you could definitely have some differential equation which in which involves not just the k derivative, but lower order derivatives and it, it sort of mixes everything up badly. And then it's not very clear how to proceed. So our goal will be, as we see the future videos, our goal will be to, to keep, uh, introducing techniques that will help us look at various sort of structures of equations and figure out how to convert them to integration problems. And every time you do that, keep it at the back of your mind that it's going to have this behavior, that you'll get a constant of integration and that's going to be the parameter for your general solution family. Okay, that's important. And again, for higher order, again, you'll get k steps, k constant of integration, there'll be k parameters so the general solution family. Uh, there are some, some situations where we solve differential equations in some slightly different way where it doesn't look like you're doing an integration, but it's still indirectly, it's still related to integration. Okay. Great.